exhibit consists of 51 portraits because there's more than one of a, of a couple of people that are made by artists from around the country who responded to a call I put out for artists who could create a portrait that captured a likeness to donate to the families of the victims of the Pulse nightclub attacks. The scale of this attack and also the, the LGBTQ community was targeted was heartbreaking to me because they're already a community that's vulnerable, already not feeling, struggling with feeling accepted, struggling with feeling safe. So it just broke my heart and I wanted to think there must be some way to do something about this. You know, I, as an individual, what can I do? And my skill set is in art and it's what I, I, you know, I believe in art, I believe in it as something that, that is transforming and healing and, and um, reminds us about why we're here. It was just a very concrete thing I could think of to do to help. The goals of the project, um, to give the artist a way of meaningfully responding in some way that might be helpful to the community, to um, create an exhibit where people could come and process their feelings and cherish and honor the lives that were lost, um, and a way for the families, hopefully some kind of comfort or some measure of kindness to the families who are left with this great loss. I put out the call through Facebook, really. I went through um, my friends who were artists and asked them to sp spread the word to their friends who were artists, and it went out and out and out like that. And as soon as it started to go out, I started to receive an enormous, very passionate response. People not only wanting to participate, but, but almost begging me <laughs> to participate. I just saw it today for the first time. I just came here this morning, and I love the way this space is so, it's like a sanctuary. It feels very sacred, the way it's um, exhibited. This show in Orlando is the only time these portraits are going to be shown as a group together. And after that, they'll be taken down and given to the families. The beauty of each of these portraits, I mean, they're just breathtaking. I chose Luis Ocasio Capo. I read a little bit about Luis, and he was just a, he was a young man. And when reading about him, he was kind of in this transitional period in his life where he was post-graduating from high school, he had moved from Cleveland to Orlando to pursue a love of dance. When I read that, I was, I can really, I knew exactly what that felt like. You know, I'm, I'm much older than him now, but at that time, I, rem I was like transported to what it was like to be 20 years old and just going through that process of, of figuring things out, figuring out your passion, and that really resonated with me. In surrounding him with the flowers, I felt like I was surrounding him with beauty, and I and I felt like in researching about him that he just kind of had that effect on people, where everybody that he encountered, everybody that he was around, he was a joy to be around. I participated in the project also by making a painting, a portrait, um, and my portrait of um, Antonio Devin Brown is here. I I really chose him because I looked at his face and I was moved by his face. There's something of the vulnerability in his face, something of the tenderness um, of him and the softness. He's got such a beautiful mouth. This painting actually came rather quickly. It doesn't always go that way, but when I started painting Antonio, it just, it just flowed. I hope they'll feel like he's looking at them. I hope they'll see the, the life in his eyes and the the um, soulfulness in his eyes. The tragedy also in this image is that he lost his life too soon. I painted Juan Chavez Martinez. It's a difficult painting to paint. Uh, he was, the photograph I had was of him in a car and it was a selfie and I didn't want to highlight the car. I really wanted to highlight the person. I, I, at first I really struggled with painting, you know, just his physical features, his eyes and his nose and his mouth. And uh, over time, as I really studied his face and got to really become acquainted with Juan, uh, it became a lot more emotional for me. 
I hope that when people see this picture, they really feel the presence of Juan and uh, they, they feel his presence and uh, that they uh, get a good feeling and they, they remember him and his life and uh, how many people he touched. It's an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> like I keep going back and forth between feeling very joyful about what this is and what people have given and the beauty here and then feeling the loss of these people and anticipating seeing their friends and family tomorrow at the reception. Today is the opening uh, reception for the exhibit and the gallery is filled with, with uh, artists who have participated, people in my family, people in the families of victims. I'm just going around saying hello to everybody and it's quite amazing and overwhelming at the same time. I'm just taking it all in. A lot of the family members have been here, a lot of the artists that created these pieces are here tonight. So I just wanted to be here to interact with and thank the artists and see how the families like their courses. We were the victims of the worst gunshot violence in American history and of hatred. And the best way, I think, to respond to hatred and violence is with love and creativity, and that's what's happening today. Hearing stories about Xavier, uh, what I kept hearing is that he just exuded light. He exuded happiness. So I wanted to pick a composition and uh, some background rules surrounding that that would best illustrate that and best bring that out. I'm just here to give my respects um, and to see this beautiful gallery with these amazing people and great artists. It's overwhelming. Um, it's, it's, it's great artistry, but at the same time, it's very sad. This is Bianca Drayton, his other mother. I love this picture because it brings color and it also brings out her smile. The smile that he would bring out of her was, was just something that was just, you know, something that could never be taken away when they was together. I'd, I'd rather see her right here than in a picture, but I'm happy that this picture is here. I'm happy that she's smiling in it. I'm happy that the artist actually captured the look in her eye. I am happy about all that, but I am not happy that she's not here. I took a deep breath before I walked in and I'm still taking it all in. I still haven't seen all of the portraits, so I'm just taking it one portrait at a time. I knew one of the victims and I knew many of the, I know many of the survivors who lost many of their friends that night, uh, whose stories we all know now. Folks who I know who lost four, five, six friends that night, who their portraits are on display, and I know that each individual portrait is just a powerful, living representation of who these beautiful angels were. What should be remembered about deep an impact it had on this community and how everyone came together in solidarity in the days and weeks and, and year since that we all now are less accepting of those who are intolerant. I think that's a beautiful thing. I don't think we will ever forget the souls that were lost in cults and those that were injured. And also the community response, which was love, compassion, and unity.